Let's talk about the Goron Rock Survivors preview number three, which brings us Omenbringer, Fighting Spirit, and Canyon Shelter. Uh, Omenbringer, the ready spell itself, is uh, main action and exhaust, time class, and a basic. Place an Omenbringer conjuration on the battlefield. Flavor text says, the Phoenix betrays us all. You will see. Now, the Omenbringer, which is obviously the part we care about. We don't care about the book. Uh, is, this, is, this is the most generic book. Right. It has no focus. It has no book tags. It's, 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 a, it's, it's a it makes a 2-2 two, two for 2. Right. And the, it's uh, correct. For the, for the again, the time class and a basic, you end up with 2 attack, 2 life, Omenbringer. It's got a conjuration limit of 2. First ability is called 4 one, 2 When this unit comes into play, you may look at the top two cards of a target opponent's draw pile. Place each card on the top or bottom of that player's draw pile. Then has the second ability of Hasten. When this unit is declared as an attacker, if it has one or more status tokens on it, you may remove one exhaustion token from a ready spell. That's pretty cool. Hasten's pretty cool. Yeah, all the text is cool. I mean, this this card suffers because it's going to be probably the worst of the two dice summons. Um, that are you, think it's the, you think it's the worst? You think it's... Uh, it's not worse than my love of Cricket. Cricket's worse than this, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think that uh, Gecko is worse than this, too, whatever that card's called, that makes the seeds. Oh, Indigo Creeper? Yeah. Well, Carl, it's, it's close. I'm not sure. Carl won Ash, Plat Hat Ash's game day in Columbus with Creeper. That doesn't make it good. <laughs> like... <laughs> Like you could win anything with like a random something in your deck, right? Like and and creepers as a strategy, like if your pawn doesn't have anything for it, I guess it runs you over. But um, well, it never actually runs you over. It just slowly grinds you into like a million pieces, just through incremental advantage over and over. That's really what it does. Um, so what I would say is that it's definitely worse than bear. I think it's definitely worse than Lion, and I think it's definitely worse than uh, Owl, and I think it's worse than Illusory Demon, with the caveat that Illusory Demon... Are you talking about Three-Eyed Owl? No. Mindfog uh, Owl. Mindfog Owl. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I, I think it's worse than... Of the, of the two dice activates, I think it's worse than... I think it's definitely worse than Bear. It's definitely worse than Lion. It's definitely worse than Mind Fog. Um, can you, can we think, really count yeah. Bear though? Because Bear Bear's got the book tax. Okay, so so don't count it. It's yeah. <laughs> like it's still worse than that card. Uh, but if you if you just want to compare it against things that don't have the book tax, then the ones I named is worse. With the caveat that Illusory Demon requires you to play Illusion, which puts you in a weird place. False doesn't it, doesn't mean it's Sorry, false demon. Um, uh, doesn't mean it's bad. It just like forces you to play some cards in the rest of your deck that would be worse. But the actual card itself, the two two that pings and exhausting you, I think is better than this. Um, yeah, Cam is saying strength and hot combo, screaming at me. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, I I know Cam how much you love strength and. I'm not I'm not going to argue with you about the merits of strengthen as a whole but I think that when you when, say hawk you mean this? Yeah. It's oh, I I took it to be a crow. Like crows oh. are like the bad omen. Yeah, it looks a little big to be a crow. And it's got the brown on it which yeah, kind of makes it Prospect bear looks like it has big icicles on its back. <laughs> but we still call it a bear. <laughs> it's true. Like, but it does say bear in its title just to be fair. Um, but anyways, like, let's not get caught up on the semantics of this. I, I think that, look, I, I like, I like the idea that untapping a ready spell on your board can be very powerful. I think, I think the ceiling on that is pretty high. So, so to clarify, I did not take that ability into account when ranking these against the other books. Right. Because that is an ability that it doesn't do by itself. Correct. Um, if it did that by itself, I do think it's better than False Demon. And depending on where the meta goes, better than Lioness. Sure. If, if it did that with no extra work. Because it doesn't, then, like, 
like if you turn that ability on, it becomes very interesting, but then it really is more like, uh, like creepers or something where it's a build around me. <laughs> Carl always sleeping on creeper. <laughs> um, where, where it becomes like this piece of your deck and you're committing another, well, I guess you're committing a Phoenix born or another three to six cards in your deck to make that work. Yeah. And if you're doing something powerful with that, then it's really good. Like, even if all you're doing is making a second Omen guy, like, that's pretty good. Um, well, I, w- I would say, like, obviously, to me, the first card that, to your point, that can be used with powerful effect on Omen Bringer is Time Hopper. And the reason I say that is because the first Hopper can put the status token on the Bringer, you can attack, immediately untap the Hopper, and if your opponent doesn't kill the Hopper right there, you can make two more bunnies for another time. Well, you have to have a second hopper book to do that still sure you still have to have a focus um, hopper book yeah yeah i mean but yeah i mean in, in general like i think the most common time you're going to see hasten is if if you're playing hoppers i guess but more often uh lulu because you just like side right. action spark your guy attack Absolutely. Untap the book, make another 2-2, or untap a different ready spell that you had in your first five. Um, which is interesting because because of Lulu's four spell board, it's like less necessary to do that. Having the the book reset is a lot cooler on the, the ones that like can't go four wide or five wide. I'd see this I see this as something you could do with Echo. Uh, I mean like I think I think you get a lot of value out of untapping Things like Lightbringer, obviously things like Frostback Bear. You know, I mean, they're they're take any kind of impactful, right. ready if you're, spell. If you're untapping a summon book, it's essentially like you put the work in to be like a closer to a four book or whatever, rather than a three in most cases, I would think, and. Like I said, even if all you do is like make a crow and then Lulu it and then attack the font, like like make crow next turn, Lulu it attack and untap your crow book, that's still pretty good. Like you're you're getting an additional two two out of your turn sure. at the cost, like at at base cost of like two two for two dice, but you're not spending an additional card on it. Um, and the, the three, two that you attack with spark is very good into most things. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's in general, it's pretty good. Um, I, th- I think when the, you, when you think about it, essentially the, the hastened component of Omen Breaker bringer makes it a three die conjuration because you're going to have to invest another die somewhere. only, only if you choose it to be. Because sure. you can still play it in mode of two two for two that like kind of right. messes with their draw or whatever. Right. Because right. that that ability isn't nothing, but it's pretty close to nothing. Right. Um Yeah. I, I mean I think that's just something that you'll have to decide when you're building decks around Omen Bringer, like what is the plan? And it's right. not even think... building around it, it's just deciding if Omen Bringer is gonna slot in. I will say the one nice thing about Omen Bringer Bringer is that because it's a two conjuration count, there's almost zero reason to include extra copies of the book. You can just play one copy and uh, first five it if it's part of your plan. And that's just- right. It'd be a really weird situation if you needed the third one, mm-hmm. like in the same turn. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I assume that the card has two modes where you're playing it because you care about Hasten, in which case it's two dice, and it's not exactly three dice. It's like two dice plus whatever value of the other dice you're spending is the status counter. Right. Because if it's like Spark, for instance, the status counter is not a whole dice. Like most of the dice you're spending is to get the the alteration put on. Uh, you just get the status counter like as icing on the cake. Right. Um, so in that case, it's like, you know, two and a quarter dice or whatever. 2.1 sure. dice. But... So it's either that mode where you're you're using it for hasten, so you're putting deck building work and like 
order of plays, work, actions into it to do that. Or it's a 2-2 two, two for 2, and you want a 2-2 two, two for 2 in a deck that's, like, heavy time, right? Like, right. you just want whatever not one life unit out of a summon book well, in time. And and we haven't seen a two life time conjuration up to the like, That's not true. What's, oh, no, no, no. Ember. Gorn Rock previews the, like, lizard. But I think, the, does the lizard actually cost time? Or is it just, is it just natural? I don't remember. Oh, I thought it was a time. Maybe I'm wrong. I thought it was a. I thought it was a natural summon. Maybe it's natural time. Maybe it's both. I'm looking right now. Corn Rock Survivors preview two. Lizard is nature. Uh, yeah. So okay. So it's a nature. So you're right. Uh, Turtle has three life, but it's not an attacker. Right. Um, so yeah, it's a. Uh, so it, it's what I would call a chunkier. Time it's, yeah, it's, it's just like Time's version of the ones that we named, right? Right. Every color kind of has one, and uh, Time got theirs. Yep. All right. I, I think I think the jury's out on this card for me. On um, Coleman? Yeah. I, I'm right. not... I, I think the majority of times it's going to get played is just like you want a beefier summon, and... You're playing time. This this is probably a pretty good card in Stephanos' Rymia list. I think that's wrong. Think so? Why? Because Rymia is already doing it, and the Rymia list doesn't want these kind of units. The only units in that Rymia list are things that mill you or ancestral army that makes three blockers. Like the four one ability is like you know, very similar to the Rymia ability, but totally unnecessary when you have Rymia and Purge already running. Because this doesn't mill you, it puts them on the bottom. If this milled you, then I would maybe agree, but... Well, it, it opens up... So, like, when you like when you use Rymia's ability and Purge, you're left with no body on the board. Whereas, with this, I guess... I mean, I guess it's because it takes two turns, that's not true. So... Uh, you're probably right. I just, I, I, I'm trying to figure out, like, in my mind, I'm trying to figure out what, what deck wants Omenbringer. What deck really wants Omenbringer? Right. I, I think it's not what deck wants Omenbringer. I think it's what deck wants a time to do. Ignore sure. all text. Like, you only do the text because it's better than zero. But I don't think there's, at least right now, a deck that wants to actively force warn you or forewarn you, whatever. Right. Like Car Carl's saying, and I think this is a good this is a good um, this is a good comment. I think the better comparison with it is with Foresight and Christian's list. Um and I could I could see that. I and could, I don't necessarily agree with that either. In Christian's list specifically. I, I believe that it is similar to Foresight. Um, and this is obviously like the kind of ability that they want in time because it's the second iteration of a like a time card that I guess was foresight just basic. I don't remember. Um, but of these decks that has that kind of like stack your opponent's pile ability. But in in Christian's deck, I think he's gonna be foresighting himself to try to find the other fallen book. Like he's using it to dig his own pile, not his opponents. And this only hits your opponents. I think this card would be a lot sweeter if it hit yours. If you wanted it to, yeah, I, I think if I think if you could target your own deck, then then it builds in some filtering and becomes very very powerful. Yeah, uh, and, and I think this card is good. Like, I I don't want to sound like a, um, yeah, Carl. I I looked at that also. Like that was the first thing I looked at. It just says target opponent. So if it hits yours, that really changes things because then if you have some kind of combo case and deck going on. Being able to like dig two in your own pile to like get the combo pieces is pretty cool, but it's more just like a like maybe kind of stymie your opponent type thing, and I'm not sure that that's very effective in a game where you can drop to five. Yeah, but it, it again forewarn two is better than not doing it. Like I I tried to before going to this because I knew we talked about this. I tried to think of a situation where 
you would want to not do it, like some corner case where it'd actually be bad and I couldn't. I think even even if all you do is put them both back, having the information is better so than not. I, I could see this, so I could see this, um, this alongside Creepers and Koji, by the way, because Koji could put the status token on the bringer at no cost, just a side action cost. And then you would be able to untap the creepers and get more creepers moved. So you could accelerate the creeper engine. I, I agree with that precisely, Carl. Um, he says, I wouldn't play this for either of the abilities. Yeah. And then says Gates is better for refresh. And I agree with both those statements. Yep. But that's, that's not to say that I wouldn't play this card. Like I just, like Carl said, you wouldn't play it for its text. Right, and, it's, and it's I just, agree with you also that like Koji is a good thing because he gives you a free activation of the haste, and if that's something you want to do, yeah. And Koji is kind of primed for that, both because he has the three spell board and a huge battlefield. So right. like, even if all you do is like again make a crow next turn, Koji the crow and attack and untap your crow book you're always going to have space to make the additional pro or whatever thing you untap with it. Right. Absolutely. All right. So uh, let's, let's move on from the bringer. Um, I would say right now we're kind of fair to middle in on this card. Uh, but let's, uh, let's go down to the fighting spirit here. Uh, fighting so, <laughs> this card is so funny to me. <laughs> fighting spirit is a ready spell. He's definitely channeling his in there like Goku you know, kind of thing here. Dude, he's he's just. I told you before. He's just Night Wolf. <laughs> like from I don't think Wolf you've Wolf actually Wolf. said that. I don't think you've actually well, said I, that. I said, up to this point. I said Lulu was girl Night Wolf. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Because she has like the real American Indian get up. But uh, yeah, this dude is like like this is the straight up Falcon punch, complete with Falcon. Like, yeah, yeah. I want <laughs> the alternate art of this card. I want is like a GIF from Smash Bros. <laughs> Wait. Uh, all right, so <laughs> I, I'm out of sorts now. Every uh, time I activate this, I'm going to yell, show me your moves. <laughs> oh, boy. Show me your moves. Show me your moves. Uh, ready spell here. Side action, one time class uh, to play it. Uh, text on this card is very long, but it says, after you control with one or more status tokens on it is destroyed, place one status token on this spell. And then it's got a side action and exhaust. Add X to the attack value of target unit you control for the remainder of the turn. Then move one status token from this spell onto that unit. Um, this X equals the number of status tokens on the spell. So uh, to me, I can have a same specialist deck strengthen mixed with snake. I, I don't know if I agree with that because the only unit that's going to charge Fighting Spirit is the Snake in those decks. Yeah, this. I don't think this card is good. I, I, I think so, this card is really fun. And if there's some combo deck that there turns out to be where you, like, I don't know, smash for 10 or whatever, then, like, it becomes powerful. But it's just so much work. Did, did you you remember, like, my, my James, my James, like, aggro deck I was playing the other day? You, you remember that? It had, like, the standard bearers and the flash yeah. strikes. Like, that that's the kind of deck I think this wants to be in. Because yeah, I just don't know if it even does anything there. You're, you're absolutely right about that. Like, your deck had a bunch of units with status counters that died. Uh, it's just so, like... I don't know. I, yeah, I, 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 I'm with you, Carl. It's <laughs> definitely not a snake card. I don't think this card is meant to be with snake. I think this card is clearly meant to be with Time Hopper, Goron Rock Brawler, which is why the Brawler is kind of on the card. Uh, but like, you don't really care about the Brawler really, getting bigger. Like, right? You don't. You want both halves of Brawler are not a combo with this because you don't want to your four dice unit to die. Sure. To charge up the Fighting Spirit, and you don't really care about charging up your four dice unit with this Fighting Spirit because it's already giant. Right. Um. The the X value here is interesting because if it does have two or three counters on it, you activate it, it, it only loses one counter and it gives, you know, plus three or plus. And you essentially, like, in the long run, which is kind of a terrible thing to say about a card like this that's obviously an aggro card, 
but over the course of the game, that counter is never going to go away. Right. Um, well, I guess that's not entirely true either because the like a- the after unit control dies text is exhaustible. So if you use this, you pump up your guy in attack. It puts a counter on it. If that guy dies in the same turn, it's not going to charge up the fighting spirit. Correct. That's right. Which kind of sucks because, like, it feels really... like that top box should have been inexhaustible. Yeah, and they move it to the bottom and put it in this little yellow box or whatever. Yeah. I also think it's weird. Like, I don't know. It's this is a really strange card. It is obviously like again if you get the uh, um. If you get the ability off for three or four or whatever, it's pretty good. I, the card that this reminds me the most of is uh, strengthen or empower. Yeah, both, um, both are pretty good comparisons here. And I, I think it's worse. I, I know it's worse than strengthen. Um, so I kill, guess it's you know, that could be a potential plan for sure. Um, I mean, yeah, like that's that's what I think, Killer. Also, like I think I think it's like you could make a big unit and then like accelerate into a fighting spirit, hypnotize, and go for the win. But like, man, is that a lot of work? <laughs> that's a lot of work. Uh, Gilder Guile says uh, seems decent with Omen Bringer. Seems generally a go wide card as well. Yeah, I mean, it it's okay with Gilder. I guess. I mean, like. It definitely sure. is. Gilders is good as anything. You just you you need cheap guys that make counters. I'm sorry, I, I got his name mixed up. He said it seems decent with Omen Bringer. Um, o- Omen Bringer is also fine, uh, just because that's another guy you want a counter on. So yeah. like, if you're building the deck for the hasten ability, like uh, the only thing I'll say about it is that the Omen Bringer itself doesn't have a counter on it to begin with, so it doesn't well, turn on Fighting Spirit. But so what you do is you fighting spirit the omen bringer. It puts a counter on it, and then you attack, and you can untap the fighting spirit. Then so when it dies in combat, it'll still get the counter back. Well, not because your fighting spirit will be exhaust, and then no, because you because the omen bringer has haste in Jesse if it has a status counter on it that it just got from fighting spirit. Oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> um, and then like it it has a like you still have to get a source for that token on the omen bringer some from somewhere though because. Fighting spirit. No, from the it. fighting spirit, it gives one when you like. Yeah, but it has to have one on it. Yeah, I, I, I know. I, I don't think this card is good. I hope somebody builds a sweet deck with it. Like, yeah. Um, Cam says this is a hoppers card. Yeah, it, it's it definitely feels like Omen Bringer and Hoppers want to be together, and Fighting Spirit may just run alongside those. But I, whether that's good or not, I don't know. Um, Killer Cactus says Max Masked Wolf plus Fighting Spirit plus Swing. I don't know. That sounds bad. Um, <laughs> This, sure. I, the Mass Wolf, like, I think is a little too cute, but in general, this is a fine thing to do with Accelerate, I think. Yeah, I mean, th- that might be an Accelerate play that's decent. I mean, to, like, let the Mass Wolf go up top a little bit more, but, I mean, well, if the that's... Mass real... Wolf, the Mass Wolf doesn't need to Accelerate because you can activate Mass Wolf and it gives you a side action. That's true, if you have it focused. Uh, you have to have it focused, yeah. but yeah, that's true. In general, yeah. like, like, Accelerate, make a Time Hopper... Fighting spirit, whatever. Yeah, you know, yeah, that kind of thing. So we're we're gonna start fair to middling on this one as well. Maybe maybe that's even generous. I, I'm gonna call this card unplayable and competitive okay. until somebody shows me otherwise. Okay. It just if it started with one, I would think it'd actually be good. Yeah. Like if it had one on it to begin with, but since you have to put the first one on it yourself, like it seems kind of rough. I'm not disagreeing. I'm, I'm, but even even then, it would still kind of be like uh, just okay, because this card in itself is like an engine, and I don't know. I guess if you have multiples of them in play, it starts getting a little wacky, because you'll get like like as soon as it's kind of like fallen, where like the second and third one multiply the effectiveness. Mm-hmm. It's just in, instead of generate like like fallen obviously turns those the second and third one like directly into plus one card. Right. This just turns it into like plus I don't know X damage point, point two cards or whatever plus one attack is worth. Right. 
The uh, Killer Cactus says confusion sports question mark meh. Yeah, I mean, I think honestly, if you're really gonna try to play that masked wolf line, you might as well just have that that back end card on your, your accelerate be a secret door. Because the one life on Mass Wolf yeah. on the back end of Secret Door allows you to just bypass and, and only costs you to die to do that. So it's Yeah, there's there's I, I think that's most if if this becomes competitive, it will be some kind of weird combo deck like that where it gets a million counters and you take it's it's like a Voltron deck, right? Like you're like but, in a Voltron in some way. But um, uh, I mean there's a potential to try to play it like strengthen where like I'm just playing hoppers or whatever. And I use this to uh, have my hoppers trade up. It's it's like a slow version of strengthen though, because because you don't get the plus two immediately. It means that you're like it's like a round two, round three, like right. It, it's a that would be a grindy way to play it. Like yeah, but and hoppers kind of like hoppers is like what this wants most because that's like a cat status counter and a guy you want to die right but it doesn't work the way you want it to because this is a side action as the spell itself and a side action to activate right so you can never like make a hopper and do it at the same time not without accelerate right right, right. so you're, you're building you're back to that combo of having to have like all the parrots and pieces right now granted the fighting spirit and the hoppers are going to be in play so the only card you have to draw to make that work is accelerate but um, right, and and it's still possible to like one turn make a hopper take whatever main action. Right. Next turn you can still fighting spirit the hopper and attack, um, and that puts that kind of puts them in a weird place, I guess, where you're getting in for you know above the curve damage out of your time hopper, and they have to decide if they just take damage to the face or if they want to let you trade up. Right. Because if they take damage to the face, then they have a bunny with a counter on it that they have to worry about. Um, for future activations of right, Hopper Book. I don't know. It's kind of interesting. The more I, I talk it out, the more I'm like on board, but I still don't think it's... Chat, why didn't anybody tell us if we didn't have the cards up? We were just we were just talking about the cards while, while staring at our faces, so you could have said something, guys. Um, let's move on oh, to the I next one. I, I had it on my screen. Like I just had the website up. I yeah. assume that you were taking care of the production quality. I, I, I know, but apparently I'm half asleep at the wheel tonight, so and somebody else is going to have to take the wheel um, all right, so last card. Uh, this is the final Lulu spoiler. This one's an interesting one. Canyon Shelter. It's a ready spell, main action, and has a book tax of a nature class to play. Uh, and then it has a side action exhaust. Remove an exhausted unit you control from play and place it face down under this spell. Then later, as a main action in one time class, choose a unit underneath this spell and place it onto your battlefield. Place one status token on that unit. Uh, this is a this lot. Card, of work. This card, I think, is the most interesting of the ones we've talked about today because mm -hmm. it does some unique stuff. Like I know a lot of these time cards have done unique things, but this one specifically, like it, it puts you in time nature. Yep. Uh, it has both colors on it. We know that. Um, but it does a lot of weird things that, like, could potentially be very powerful. It uh, it doesn't remove blockers, so it doesn't have all the modes of blink, but it has a lot of the modes of blink, um, where it can reset your guy and heal it and redo come into play abilities, mm -hmm. and it's reusable. Um, it also has this weird thing where like if you use it a couple times the uh, the put the guy back is not an exhaust ability so like you kind of like save your dudes up and then put like three guys into play outfit in a turn <laughs> it's, it, I mean well, obviously, where you're going to get the most power from something like this, right, is when you talk about um, you talk about knights, Gorn Rock Brawlers, Iron Rhinos, um, because you can attack with that unit and then as a side action, immediately shove it underneath, and that means that your opponent can't remove it. 
Right. And it also puts a lot of pressure on your opponent to attack the, your exhausted units where like a lot of times we see like once a unit's exhausted, it just sits there and you're like, okay, I'm going to attack this before the, the round ends because I want it off the board before we go to the next round. Right. But I don't have to do it right now. Like it's just going to sit there. Right. Unless you're playing against Echo or something, you know, has untaps. But with this in play, like if I attack with Bear, and you want to attack that bear, like you kind of have to do it that turn. It's also a nice tech. It's a nice tech for double exhaustion that can happen off things like Sonics, Chaos Gravities, right? And I mean, and it, and Cam, I agree. Raven's a good a good example. Like that's another just three dice. I, I think anything that costs three dice. Like you could you could also do the same thing with like Emperor Lion, you know, if you had a bunch of laws in your deck because it really cheapens the the law costs. Yeah, the I mean, obviously, like the first thing I'm gonna say is reverse call. But. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I mean, obviously, like I think any enter the battlefield, any any unit that has enter the battlefield effect is gonna be very good here. I mean, yeah, in, in general, like it's a very cheap untap that's reusable. And then it also has other interesting modes. Mm -hmm. um, because this, like like Blink, this untaps and full heals it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would say this alongside Blink in Jericho gives you a lot of flexibility and a lot of consistency. Because one of the things that I struggle with a lot with Jericho is you, her win rate or my win rate with her seems to be directly a reflection of how many times I can successfully Blink in a game. You know, if if I can set up good blinks, right. and and this means that you can play blink without having to play crappy Jericho, right, Gilder? I don't. Yeah, I definitely don't, I don't think, think you're she's gonna, actually crappy, but no, I, I, uh, I Gilder, I don't think uh, I don't think you're really trying to necessarily use it in the same round. Uh, you're you're. It's sort of like putting a guy away, right? Um, in if you start this in your first five, you will not reset anything in round one. Yeah, that cannot happen. Yeah. Well, it can with um, Omenbringer, if you set the Omenbringer up. Sure. I, I, if you have a Gates or a Fiona or whatever, like any of those kind of things, it yeah. will. But uh, in general, that's that's correct. This is not going to reset a guy um, in the first five. Right. So I think, I mean, obviously, like, there is synergy with the Omenbringer on a card like this. Um, and... and I will tell you that, you know, what I like about it most, what I like about it most is generally opponent removal is not on reaction speed, right? So what I mean by that is, is that if you stick a unit and it comes around to you and you're going to get an opportunity to use that unit, like your opponent may have a two shadows because they didn't fester it or whatever it may be, then you have the opportunity to use the unit and immediately protect it from a two shadows, which can be a blank uh, out there, and I think with time coming into play, we're going to see more two shadows play. I just think that's a that's a given. Yeah, this this card is definitely good against two shadows. Um, it's good against uh, stasis, which is yeah. kind of funny. That is interesting. It is good with stasis, um, right? I mean, it, it's good against any uh, opposing alterations. Mm -hmm. It's bad with your own alterations, I guess. So, like, it does have kind of like not great synergy with Lulu. Or any of her like alterations, like hunting weapons and in flame, that we've seen in this deck. Right. So I, I like I'm obviously like in the Lulu precon. You're probably using this just on Gorn Rock Brawler, right? Yeah, if if you play this at all, right? Like, well, well in yeah. The, I mean, in, in the, the precon, precons, like you only got yeah. ten cards, so <laughs> you're gonna play. Right. Why? Why not? Because it might be better as discard to fix a dice when Maybe. you have actual good cards to play. Like the, <laughs> I I think that this is definitely a build around me. Mm -hmm. Not like the whole deck, but like you have to have some real things to do with it in order for it to be good. Mm -hmm. But it's a very unique effect, and I think it's potentially quite powerful. So a couple of things to note from a rules perspective that are good to know because Nick did chime in about this in the Discord over the last couple of days in case you missed that. Number one, each copy of Canyon Shelter is allowed to have a unit under underneath it. So each copy has its own underneath. Um, so if you have multiple copies of Canyon Shelter, you can have as many units under it as 
copies of Canyon Shelter. It can uh, only hold one at a time. One at a time. Why? That's what uh, that's what the ruling is. Is that written in the rule book? Because it's not written on this card. That's what uh, I'm sure it'll end up in an FAQ because that's what Nick said. Okay, that's um, that's very different than I thought this was. Let me um, let me look it up here. So is each individual? So the question came from Lark: Is each individual copy of Canyon Shelter only able to access the units stored under that specific copy? If I had two copies of Canyon Shelter in play, for instance, they would each accumulate their own stack of face down units who could only draw from their own stack. Correct? He said they each have a separate underneath section. So maybe. So, so yeah, that that doesn't say only one. That just says that right. if you, the abilities are unique to themselves. So if I use one Canyon Shelter to remove one unit, I use a different Canyon Shelter to remove a different unit. They can only put back the one that they removed, right? So it's important which that, that makes sense. It's it's important then that you have the, to if you were in a game, a competitive game with somebody. I think it's important to make sure that you're monitoring uh, which units are being put under which canyon shelters. Man, I I bet they're excited for this card, Nash Techie. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I haven't talked to Dijon about it yet. Um, Poor guy. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, so. Because what, what I wanted to do with it is like put a couple scalds under it and then have one big turn later where I just like scald, make scald, two scald, or scald, three scald, scalds scald. <laughs> out scald, of my time scald, dice. Scald. Three dice for six, for six value worth of scalds. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think this is good. I think, I think this is a good card. I think it will find places in certain decks. And... I'm not sure I know which ones will get it for sure, but um, I, I would venture to guess that it's going to be decks that have uh, smaller battlefields where maybe the opponent's not necessarily playing to the board, and so it allows you to suck up an already used unit to play another unit into the slot, right? And then, you know, if one of those units dies, you've got a, you know, you've got a cheap unit in reserve in the shelter ready yeah. to go i'm i'm not entirely sure that this is actual like competitive playable um that will be yet to be seen like you said it, it has a lot to do with like what your opponent's doing mm -hmm. because the best the best case scenario for you is you like attack with a knight they counter for two or three damage or whatever and then you remove it mm -hmm. so that you, at next round you get a one dice knight plus whatever else you're doing and or like you attack with your thing they guard and then you do it because you suspect two shadows or something like to that effect right or uh fester that kind of thing but in general this is again it's this card kind of feels like the last one we talked about where you put a lot of work into this it doesn't do anything by itself and it has a like a big potential to be kind of like your deck's whole engine right but that means you have to have a lot of cards in your deck that are good with it and you have to be able to engineer a lot of situations that are good with it um and i just i don't know if that's i don't know if that's worth the time it's a it's a very uh very good question i don't know either uh, at the end of the day, I don't know. There are situations in my mind where it could be very good. And there are situations in my mind where it's just worse than, you know, immediate value, seeds of, like, adrenaline rush, or... Um, it doesn't do that unless you untap it. Um, well, right. But, I mean, it's kind of it's kind of buying you an untap effect, right? Like, in, in, a, in a roundabout way, it's buying you an untap effect, so... Yeah. 